Ready to go. Wow. All right. It's very kind of you to, you know, organize a meeting in a giant auditorium full of people. Yeah, well, you know how kind of hard meeting rooms are to find, but Gary wanted us to talk about this, so... That would be Gary from marketing, but it's... Yeah, let, let's get Gary on the oh. phone. Oh. Hi guys, I can hear you but I can't see you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. The reason I've called this meeting is we really need a new website for a marketing promotion, something we can update easily ourselves. I've contacted the media agency we usually use and they want to host it on WordPress. Are you both okay with that from a security perspective? Yes. No, of course not. I don't understand. Are you saying WordPress is not secure? Hi, Gary. It's Tim from Security Team. Uh, WordPress is a totally reasonable choice. Well, Gary, you know me. I'm Glenn. Work in security as well, but um, more focused on the on the offensive side of stuff nowadays. You must be joking. Whatever Tim is saying, really, it's WordPress. This is this is not going to end well. Yes. No. Which is it? Look. WordPress powers over 30% of the web. Some of the biggest fantasy websites out there use it, like White House. Probably that's, that's they have. Go. That's impressive. Yes. I know they have their own security problems, mainly from the inside. Uh, but also IBM, The Sun, pretty much you name a big site these days, it's almost certainly running WordPress. Whereas from my side, Gary, we've stopped as an industry even talking about WordPress beats. Uh, breaches anymore. They're not even skateboarding dog stories at the end of the news anymore. WordPress breaches are just such a daily occurrence that it's you're, you're insane to even start around this. The entire WordPress ecosystem is pure insanity. Whatever Tim's saying, really, no. You're okay. i get my back in. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't do this. Garrett, this whole point is that, you know, me and Glenn are going to go backwards and forwards and we're obviously going to break our character. And Glenn is here to be a foil and to ultimately fail miserably. Like everything. Um, but he's going to be using old, old tropes and old myths that really frustrate people. He's going to be saying things like, WordPress is insecure, principally because he used it how many years ago? Yeah, six or seven. Six or seven years ago. That's good, because I reckon the majority of people in the room, if you've been using, if you've used WordPress, you probably haven't used it in the last few years. Especially those of you who have decided that WordPress is inherently insecure. Because you remember it from the dark old days. And you remember, you hear statements like, WordPress isn't secure, PHP isn't secure. And the reason you hear people saying PHP isn't secure, I have a theory. My theory is very simple. You wrote shit code 10 years ago in PHP, and now you think PHP is insecure. Makes sense, doesn't it? We're now in a world where PHP is a decent modern language, and WordPress is slowly but surely getting there. We don't need to be worrying about old tropes and just running around saying, WordPress is insecure! You're actually going to sit down and no, stop breaking no. the fourth wall now. This no, is no. to be a meeting. These people aren't here. <gasps> oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. So, ignore us. Right. So, Gary, just to give you an idea of how bad this is, just um, let, I'll, in a second, I'll, scream, I'll share my screen with you. You did that what? without touching the computer. I, I, I've got a clicker. Ah. Quite why I take a clicker to a meeting, I don't know, but I've got a clicker. Um, as an attacker, the first thing I want to do with a website is username and enumeration. I want to find out what users have got on there. Most modern CMSs make that really quite hard. They go out of their way. WordPress used to have some relatively accessible things. More recently, they've given you an endpoint. They've literally given you a single JSON endpoint that will enumerate all the users. What's more, if you look at that's that's giant, that's quite scary over there. Um, if they're using Gravatar, which is obviously the default thing to do in avatars in WordPress, that there is an MD5 of the um, email address. So if you know the email address, you can get all the Gravatar details as well. Um, yeah, this is not hard. They are still making it very, very easy as an attacker. Wait, I just want to check. Your argument for WordPress is based entirely on security by obscurity. No, I'm just none trying to the, raise the bar. Yeah, none of the information on here is particularly sensitive. I'll grant you the Gravatar one is a little dodgy on that. But if we're saying that usernames are sensitive data, then I think we've got really big problems. But ultimately, this stuff, it, it, yes, I agree, it's not ideal on a public interface. Hey, guess what? 
We can, um, we can change that quite easily. There you go. Uh, so that little bit, one line of code, and all of a sudden, the uh, REST API is only available for authenticated users. You could disable the REST API altogether if you want. You can disable XML RPC if you want. But by, by setting it to authenticated users only, you're still allowing stuff like Gutenberg, which is their new shiny block editor to work. It's not a problem. Okay, but generally, the whole roles and capabilities thing is just insane. The, f the fact that what we've got, what you can have set in the database doesn't necessarily um, follow what's actually you know, being set. Gary, if you're still there, because we keep forgetting about Gary. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Um, take this as an example. This is a great example for persistence. If we, we've got a user, Tim's a, a relatively normal user, he's just a, an editor up there. If once I've managed to get myself a shell on this machine, I can update that to make Tim an administrator, Ooh. using the magic of WPCLI, which is wonderful. So Tim is now, now has the administrator role. We look at Tim's um, roles on there. Tim is both an editor and an administrator. Do you know what that shows in the UI, Gary? Do you know what when somebody comes along to check what, from, uh, what role Tim's got in the UI? It says editor. It doesn't mention administrator. Great way for hiding for persistence when you take a box. Just do that to one of their low little level subscriber users and you've got yourself a nice administrator account. Nobody's going to spot. It's a joke. Eh. You can spot it there. WP user get to... Oh look, there's two roles. But this is command line stuff. This isn't the UI. You're doing more typing. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> All the capability stuff, yes, of course. <laughs> you can tell we rehearse this really long. Well, yeah, capabilities, similarly. We can just <laughs> add an extra capability to a user. So, for example, our nice editor user, we're going to add the capability of um, <coughs> edit options, which allows us to comp change all the WordPress configuration. We're going to check that in a second. No, we're not. Does it not? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that capability, once added, that's that's it. That's there. That doesn't show in the UI. That that capability is not auditable through normal front end options. Yeah, I mean, Gary, this is true that you won't be able to see that in the normal admin interface. But ultimately, WordPress's U capability system is pretty straightforward. Uh, the thing that confuses most people is the idea that a role is actually something that is important. So whenever you've got a, a WordPress plugin, it shouldn't be testing against the role equals administrator. The roles are simply a collection of capabilities that are get applied to the user, and you test the capability, you don't test against the role. So yeah, in this scenario, uh, Tim has now got the ability to edit options. So that, so when, if we were to test the capability edit options, then yes, that would appear. But it doesn't matter whether he's got an admin role or an editor role or whatever. And we can audit this stuff. Hello? We're showing you how to audit the stuff on the screen. It's not exactly complicated. WPCLI is now a fundamental tool if you're working with WordPress. If you've been ever sort of going back in the past, you probably use the admin interface. It's full of collections and settings and bits and pieces. With WPCLI, you can do anything that you can do in the admin interface. Plus, as we've uh, just demonstrated, a couple of things more that you shouldn't necessarily be able to do, like add multiple roles. You can get WPCLI doesn't come by default with WordPress, but it is on pretty much every single sort of any hosting that says it's got the word WordPress hosting will have WPCLI installed. You can install it on your own machine. It uses PHP itself and it interacts with the database. Uh, you can also use uh, set as WP to CLI to go to a different WordPress install base. So you can say, hey, I want to use these clean set of files over here because I think that my site might be hacked, so I'm going to go and download a clean set of WordPress, and I will use WPCLI's clean WordPress files plus WPCLI to have a look at the database that is over on my other file system, which means that we're in a much safer scenario. If you haven't played with WPCLI, do, because it's the only real way to use WordPress. God, I don't like using admin. <laughs> so, back, back to Gary. Tim makes a fair point. Okay, yeah. In this whole new DevOpsy or DevSecOpsy sort of world, to, world to, uh, tools like that are great. We can build some nice pipelines for testing that sort of stuff. I'll give you that. But from an attacker's point of view, things like XML RPC, great interface for testing if user creds work. No rate limitings, no logout. Uh, sorry, no um, account lockouts if we get it wrong. I can literally just scattergun creds at that. Um, 
things like um, Cool, the tool that Robin wrote for harvesting text off websites. He's definitely not in the room. He better not be in the room. Um, um, that sort of thing for building um, username password lists, again, with aforementioned ways of getting username, it makes it really easy. The bar is still really, really low. Um, things like WP scan, in, you know, with pen tester, WP scan's treated as a bit of a joke, but it makes this thing really, really easy. It's a great entry level tool and it, it, it's terrifyingly easy for a novice to use. But that, you can just pass it password lists, and because by default WordPress doesn't actually put any real limit on this, it can go nuts. It's, it, it's just too easy. Gee, I, I wonder how we could solve that problem. Maybe we could like use tooling and, and, and on servers and stuff. I mean, we've got things like fail to ban, which we, so we could send over our fails into a fail to ban and then get it to ban it. Uh, we could even do something slightly more fancy. Uh, if you're looking at just blocking things straight out right with fail to ban, you're probably doing it wrong and looking at things like tar pitting to make sure that you're just slowing down the attacks rather than just blocking them, which is, they'll just come in with a new IP, so it's a lot easier just to tar pit. And then, you know, they're, they're, we've got the options to do things like alert us when thing, logins have occurred. Don't do that. 70,000 emails later is not fun. We can check for success logins. That's a more sensible solution. And then we can do things like limiting users' capabilities. Auditing this stuff, it's not hard. Making sure that uh, people who are administrators and who have random capabilities, that we know who they are and that we regularly check their permissions. This is not complicated stuff. Two factor, not a complicated thing to implement. Add two factor, add decent passphrases or try and do some sort of encouragement of password managers. Jobs are good and I don't see the problem here. <laughs> Does it sound familiar though? Does it sound almost like this is how we would do it with any other web application on the planet? You may have a point, but Elephant in the Room, I get to break the fourth wall well. Hello. Um, although not because I can't believe the notes in the walk over there. Would you, would you like me to <laughs> you there you go. But no, the, the WordPress community <laughs> system is, in my eyes, full on insanity. Um, most of you will probably walk in here today thinking, oh, we're talking about securing WordPress, they're just going to say don't use third party plugins. Don't use third party plugins. That would have been a great talk, although it would have been about 30 seconds long. Um, but the, 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 the plugin e um, ecostructure is just utterly insane on many levels. The first of those, the most common way that sort of your mom and pop shops will secure WordPress plugins is with a WordPress plugin. Anyone that's done any level of firewall design or just any level of architecture, doing application layer um, security at the application layer is not a great idea. It's the, the full thing is just terrifyingly ill-conceived in, in my eyes. Not only that, plugins, great, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, plugins like WordFence have their place to do, do some useful things, but WordPress has a lovely little feature called um, short in it. Short in it, um, eventually just shortens your, um, what was that? Um, shortens the um, page load time for WordPress. So if you want something WordPress that loads really, really quick and doesn't need a lot of the WordPress framework behind it, you can um, call short in it and it picks it up really quick. One of the things short in it does is it doesn't load plugins to make it fast, which means if you're doing plugin protection at the plugin layer, yeah, it's all gone. And you think, well, Glenn, you know, that's just going to be one or two use cases, one or two people that want to do odd standalone pages. So I just did a little bit of Googling for where we're using short in it. We've got things up there like um, W3 Total Cash, very, very popular. S2 member, we know a little bit about S2 member, we, don't we, We know a lot about it. <laughs> um, um, what other um, good examples? Updraft, I mean, these are popular things that are using short in it. So if you're relying on um, things like WordFence to actually um, be your protection, you're missing out on a trick. Or, uh, in so many cases, this stuff can be... Um, can be worked around. I feel at this point we should say other core security plugins are available. They, they, they are. Well, I should probably sit down because I keep nagging you for breaking the fall. Go on. Go on. Um, <laughs> so, um, how do we protect against this sort of stuff? <coughs> Clearly, uh, uh, you know, we, we're sitting here and going, okay, so maybe WordPress plugins to secure WordPress is a bad idea. Though I've emphasized that a few minutes ago he was complaining that WordPress didn't do enough security. Now he's complaining that the stuff in, that people are adding stuff to do security. <laughs> I've got this great idea. You know how I had this idea before where we could like separate stuff? Well, we could come up with this device. We could, uh, it could be hardware or software. So either it could go near your load balancer or just part of your, you know, web server. 
we could call it um, a WAF. And we could load it with rules. And that would solve that problem quite mm. neatly. Okay. I'll, I'll keep that. But plugins in general, and yeah, plugins are a bit of an elephant in the room here, because plugins for WordPress, so many of them are utter, utter trash. I mean, Tim alluded to it at the beginning. We've all probably spent our time messing around when we were probably lesser coders. We've written a PHP um, plugin. Probably a lot of them are still up there on WP.org today. People are probably still downloading them and using them, not realizing that we know they're trash. But hey, it fits their use case, so um, we'll do that. And again, themes as well. I, 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 I talk a lot about plugins, but essentially it all applies to themes as well. Themes are just collections of plugins that happen to play with the content as well. Anything a, a plugin can do, a theme can do on top of it. So it's all, all the, the, the same problem to me. And Gary, if he's still there, because we keep forgetting about Gary. Poor Gary. Um, <laughs> poor Gary. To give you an idea of how easy this is, put together a little demo for you. This is literally a very, very common theme. We're not going to use any tools, no meta exploit, nothing off exploit DB for pre-packaged proof of concept. This is literally taking a WordPress web oh, sorry, a WordPress website, very much set that like Tim would like. User registrations are turned off. We've only got a couple of accounts on there. There, um, yeah, well, we we haven't. You know, you, you've slowed me down logging in. You've, you've done all the things you've talked about so far, and we're literally just going to play with the URL. We're going to call a function within the. Um, the, the admin agent part of the, the back end that's going to turn on user registrations and set the default um, role to, um, to administrator. Oh look, we can now register. We can register as us. And when we have to go to our back end, because we set the default user role to administrator, when we go and have a look, we can look up there, refresh the page, scroll up in a second. Cash there we go. Anyone can register and we'll go and look at our user. Oh look, Glenn, administrator. No clever hacks, no nothing. Just a rubbish theme that really doesn't understand how to do any of this properly. How, how can this not, how can you condone this as acceptable? Okay, this was a genuine theme and a genuine exploit. So the theme itself uh, had a bunch of code that they were thinking was just going to update the options that, for the feed that were still in the Dopey options table, and they forgot to sanitize. They didn't even bother to check whether you were even logged in, let alone doing any sanitize on the actual data itself. It was literally a for loop that said insert into this database here these data, hence the exploit here. I have a simple solution to this. Don't do it. That's, that's, it's, it's not good code. It wasn't good code ten years ago. It wasn't good code yesterday, it's still not going to be good code in the future. And yes, Muppets exist and they do things like that. But I'm guessing there are a few people in the room who are both uh, security people and developers. If you are that person, you've written that code. It might not be the exact code, but you have written that code. And you didn't write it in WordPress. It might have been in a Perl script, it might have been in a Python script, but you've written that code. We cannot condemn an entire application based on a theme badly written by somebody, even if it did cause mass chaos and destruction of mankind. So uh, don't do this and audit your code, and audit your other code. Everybody's code should be audited, just like we would with any other vendor. So, talking of vendors, and talking of Gary, who's obviously engaged with our vendor back there, Tell us, Gary, are we, are we are we looking at some third-party premium theme, one of these off-the-shelf packages? Or so they've given us two quotes, one where they develop everything in-house, and the other one where they use a premium theme from another supplier. Do we have any preference? <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <Yeah. laughs> Gary's just been possessed by Brian Blessed. That was terrifying. Um, <laughs> so for, for those of you that were shocked there by what Gary said, not including us, basically, yes, we, we've been given choices. We can either do it in-house or we can get... Um, a third party into it. Um, if, they're, if, if they're using third party premium themes, I have a problem with that. I am not a big fan of premium themes. Premium themes, I'm not allowed to call them evil anymore, premium themes are problematic. <laughs> <laughs> premium themes, for those who don't know, again, comes back to my same bugbear, themes aren't just themes, they're collections of plugins that go with them. 
And what happens is you get your nice premium theme. It comes with a whole bunch of extra plugins. They work great. They're fantastic. Said plugin gets um, gets owned. Somebody finds a, a, a problem with subplugin. Plugin developer fixes it quite quickly. Does that filter down through your premium plugins provider all the way down to your website? Or are several years later you still running that compromised version um, with, with unknowing because there's literally no downstream feed of this stuff? And you think, oh, that's pretty unlikely, guys. If there's something major, this isn't going to happen. Rev slider. And if you've got a background with WordPress, you know about Rev Slider. Rev Slider was ages for everywhere. And the reason it was everywhere for ages wasn't the fact that Rev Slider was quite popular. Actually, with more pop up it wasn't that popular because it was quite expensive. But a lot of premium themes had deals to include it, which meant that even though Rev Slider fixed the initial vulnerability and the next one, and the one after that and the one after that, but they fixed that quite quickly, it didn't filter down. There were still sites running outdated versions of Rev, Rev Slider for, for years and years to come. And for those of you who don't know about Rev Slider, now, at this point, another, I'll get up and explain this. When we were planning this talk the other week, we sort of said, hey, great, we can go and get... He means um, Sunday. Yeah, I do mean Sunday. <coughs> um, <laughs> it's like, no problem, we'll go and get the um, WordPress attack framework and a copy of Rev Slider. We'll not demo this up ourselves. It'll be a great little working demo. Do you know how hard it is to find an old compromised version of a commercial plugin these days? We genuinely couldn't find a working version of RevSlider, which, considering Tim's background that we'll come on to later, is, is really surprising. Um, we did consider going out onto the internet and finding somebody that was still running a, a compromised version of RevSlider, popping them and copying it off their server, but we figured that probably wasn't really an acceptable thing to do, or at least accept, acknowledge on here we'd done it. So before I bagged a little bit on um, on um, Word, WordFence, um, we've actually stolen their video for doing it. So sorry, guys. We uh, Plugin level security does have a place combined with other things, especially when it means that we can steal your um, steal your video. But anyway, this was how easy RevSlider was to pop. So, it was literally <laughs> exploit off exploit DB, give it a site, say rev slider. Wait, because there's probably some people talking going on. Literally log shells. It, it was that easy. And this thing hung around the net and hung around the WordPress community for years. This is one of the reasons that WordPress has got such a bad reputation. Because this stuff didn't go away. It wasn't a case that the vendor wasn't particularly quick at responding to fix it. They did. They fixed it quite quickly. It was the fact the whole supply chain problem was in there. It took months and months and even years for um, for that thing to go away. And I'll sit back. Uh, I mean, Gary, he's he's right. Rev Slider was is a problem, and the ecosystem itself is the biggest. If you, if I had to come and list the things that we have issues with, the ecosystem is ultimately it. We have uh, a mixture of premium plugins and sort of plugins from WordPress.org. Plugins from WordPress.org, they do go through some sort of security review. It's very minimal, but it does go through like a plugin and security review. Uh, when they initially get put in there, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're kept always up to date. Um, but yeah, premium, anybody can write a plugin. That means that a guy from the local church can write the plugin through to a, um, a professional development team. Trust me, I'd have the code off the guy from the church because he's going to be way more scared, whereas the professional development team's code is going to be truly atrocious. Just saying. Um, but we can see, again, we're going back to the, all the usual things. We, we can audit it. Um, WP Scan, which we mentioned right back at the beginning, is useful as an offensive tool. It's useful defensively as well. They actually also provide uh, tooling for you to actually run it on your server, either as a WordPress plugin or using WPCLI to just give you a list of vulnerable plugins. Or, you know, there was probably a very easy way we can solve some of these problems. But we'll, I, I think we'll save that for Gary to come up with. Uh, but yeah, auditing this stuff is important. And we're not going to say don't, you know, I think we can say don't use Rob Slider. <laughs> I think, or any carousel-y, slidery thing. Just don't, don't do it. To, to be fair, the whole aesthetic of what Red Slider done is so 2010 now anyway. Oh yeah, it's all video now. <laughs> we have an in-house PHP dev team. They can test audit it for us, can't they? It's only a handful of files. It shouldn't take them too long. Oh dear. So, we haven't, we haven't got the prop. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how well that came out, that side, if it was half as deafening as it was down here. But Gary was just saying, yep, 
It's all PHP. We can audit it, can't we? Hey, uh, Gary, I'm turning you down. There's a really interesting assumption in there. Quick show of hands. Who, uh, who out there thinks um, WordPress is predominantly PHP? Very few hands, actually. They're These days, cunning. WordPress has actually got more JavaScript in it than it has PHP. The ecosystem over the last few years has absolutely exploded. Um, it, it, it's an absolute can't use the word I'm looking for, continually growing mess of um, cluster. Yeah. Mm. Um, I was say, we're, we're streaming live, so hi, Mum. I didn't say what I was about <laughs> to say. Um, but it really is. The dependency tree is an utter, utter mess. It's really small. Now. So yesterday, because we weren't putting these slides together yesterday at all, we were trying to do a dependency tree of just all the stuff in WordPress. We started with a piece of paper and another piece of paper and it grew and we decided we'd just stand on stage and say, look, the attack surface now is monumentally massive. WordPress just by default loads so many NPM, so many third party libraries. You've got jQuery in there, you've got React, you've got Backbone, which until Tim told me, I didn't even know what Backbone was. It's um, it's not like the old days where it's a, a, a little CMS built with a little bit of PHP. It's now colossal. And where you get colossal, big, complicated things, you get a tax surface. You get problems. You say colossal, I say web app. <laughs> <laughs> and, God, yeah, it is. You know, uh, to be honest, this doesn't look very big. You know, we've just got Nginx, some sort of caching. More Nginx, because we've gone back with our cache. Some PHP. We're probably talking to a Redis or, my, uh, uh, or um, Memcache up here, and we've got MySQL or MySQL S database down there. Uh, the PHP, to be honest, we can track that very easily, and I could have done a nice tree. We were going to have beautiful diagrams, but uh, yeah, it was going to get it required we more brain have, power than we require. We were uh, going to have beautiful diagrams, but I want to go to the row book. Yeah. So, Load the PHP files, that's absolutely fine. Actually, the way PHP is included is very simple, very easy for us to trace. And it's fine for libraries because, you know, on the front end, the what JavaScript gets loaded is very much determined by your front end developers who are all amazing. Because we all know theme developers are amazing. They actually are really. I, I used to really have goes at theme developers and blame them for 90% of the security problems in WordPress. <laughs> And then I remember that they have a really hard job. Bearing in mind that most theme developers came to WordPress to make something look pretty. And then we told them, go learn all this PHP. Boom. And then we said, okay, now make that PHP secure. Boom. Now learn JavaScript. Now make that secure. Walk away. So, theme developers have the hardest job in the WordPress ecosystem by far. Um, but on the front end, that's fine. They're probably using one framework. In the WordPress admin area, WordPress core itself uses jQuery, React, Backbone, Mustache, some other libraries that I didn't really remember the names of because they were all weird and ended with the word JS at the end, so I didn't care about them. Oh <laughs> <And> now. <laughs> And that's the WordPress core before the plugins add in all of their stuff. Their own version of jQuery because they didn't like the version of jQuery that came with WordPress because, because, <laughs> that they decided that they weren't going to use React, they were going to use Vue. Because. And then we get our ever increasing problems. How do we solve this? Cool. If anybody does know how to solve this, come talk to me. <laughs> and turn your phone off. <laughs> Very naughty. <laughs> but yeah, come talk to me. But in the meantime, we have to deal with this. We are slowly but surely getting rid of stuff. The WordPress interface itself, with the introduction of Gutenberg, which is as it is this like Chinese drop and drag and drop editor, but is also like a global thing for changes to the admin interface itself. Gutenberg itself is going to become is well, it's written in React, and that's where we're going as a sort of this whole CMS is slowly making its way towards React, or it appears that way. Probably change next week. So that means we should slowly but surely lose the jQuery dependency, which is good because it's massively out of date. Uh, we will slowly lose the Backbone dependency, which I think is only in there for the media library. We'll slowly lose the other stuff and hopefully we'll move into this world that is purely React because that sounds so nice. Mm. Until then, <laughs> a joy to attack surface. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've forgotten Gary again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought it was a really good idea to have Gary. It's yeah. sort of slowing us down. Gary, are you there? Okay, point taken. So you guys are the security guys. What can you do to help?
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gary, so far we've been covering the real basic stuff because there isn't normally anything complicated. We are talking, you know, right down to have a laugh. Make sure you can't hit those random endpoints. Audit your code. Choose your plugins wisely. Choose your theme wisely. I, sorry, if I'm doing this in a very sort of sarcastic way, it's because this is stuff that I hope every single person in this room knows. Implements? No. Moans about? Yeah. But this is all the really basic stuff that we're covering. What else can we do? Anything we do with a normal web app. Just because it's WordPress doesn't mean we don't do the more complicated stuff. Scott's not in the room, so we can just say, uh, yes, you could implement CSP headers. That's nice and advanced in security. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and if you do want to implement CSP headers, go find Scott. He'll love to talk to you about that at length, in detail. And tell you some services. Um, <laughs> um, from, from the red side, because we, we, we've tried to bounce this all along, the key thing, recon, recon, recon. WordPress used to be about looking for the outdated plugins, the outdated, the up, up, not updated shells. Nowadays, that ecosystem is so huge. You're not looking for one chink in the armor. You've got millions to go. You've got thousands. You've got an entire sort of structure of stuff to go at now. That it, it's a huge, complicated beast of a web app. You'll know some of your bounty hunters. You're looking for those big, complicated sites because the cracks are where things are joined together. WordPress has now become that big, complicated beast. And as for CSP headers, how well do they work in WP Admin, Tim? Tell me, Tim. Do they work well in WP Admin, Tim? Sure. No. I mean, they, they and, I, I, mean I mean, unsafe inlines for scripts is fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's, yeah, okay. So, um, remember this whole cluster <coughs> of not, mm, uh, that we were talking about? Because of that, that yes, there is a lot of inline styling and inline scripts in the AP admin area. Front end is really easy to control because obviously we can just nag at the theme developer to actually fix stuff and build it in. But yeah, the admin area is a, is a nightmare. So uh, if you were looking to try and do a CSP uh, for WP admin, I, oh, <coughs> I was part of a project that tried for about six weeks before abandoning all hope. It will get better. But then again, how many sites actually use CSP headers? It's, ask, ask Scott. I mean, it, you might have some data on that. <laughs> and a talk. And a talk. <laughs> so if we can do all this, are we safe? Yes, Gary, we're safe. Yeah, yeah, super safe. <laughs> so, Tim, as Gary's on the line, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you going to tell me, Tim, what happens when you've got a really super complicated setup that's actually really well designed, that's rebuilding sites on the fly, that does all the things you're talking about. What can go wrong, Tim? Oh, loads of share, stuff. Share with the class, Tim. <laughs> Look, absolutely, loads of stuff. I mean, once we start covering the basics, we end up with idiot, sort of things that will ultimately fall into the category of idiot configuration errors, uh, and that side of things. And i would give her one example. Let's say you're building a site using Jenkins to do your deployments. Uh, behind the scenes, you're running some commands with WP CLI, and uh, your your attacker has managed to actually get access to a shell on there. So he does have some privileges, enough to see that WordPress is playing, or WordPress is running, enough to see processes running on. But actually, somehow you've managed to lock your container down. Well done, you. You are doing well. Unfortunately, in our little tale of woe, the attacker sees just enough to know that every so often he can see a processor running, which uh, looks to be running WP cron run and then a hyphen hyphen all, and then hyphen hyphen allow root. And that process is running as root, because Jenkins is launching it and running it as root. Now, okay, now he can be he can execute things in, he can see that the there's a cron job running, and that root is occasionally running WordPress as, word, running in WordPress as root. So what does he do? Well, being a smart aleck that he is, all he needs to do is add a couple of lines in WP config, or he could have even been really smarter and just done a, put a YAML file in and just required his file just to make it nice and easy and slightly more hidden, so that he then runs his own script in that cron job, which then opens up the web server, which then opens up a socket, which then opens up about a dozen back doors, and then escalates to roots and then escalates out of the container, causing havoc across hosts. 
But I mean, that's pretty rare. It, it's pretty rare. Sorry, I understood none of that. Is that going to be a problem for us? Yes, Gary, it's going to be a major problem for us because we're definitely going to do that again. I mean, uh, do that. But no, it's not going to be the problem. Yes, you could build the most complicated system in the world, and yes, it will almost certainly get abused. But re the reality is, 99.9999999999% of hacks across the board are done from one simple attack vector. Stuff being out of date. So, how do we fix this? I think we'll update. Keeping stuff up to date. I mean, I want to show off clever stuff. I want to make, make you sit there and go, here is some examples of how we do cunning hunting down of uh, malware inside systems. I want to do all the fun stuff. But the reality is that my job is just keeping stuff up to date. Because if we keep stuff up to date, and we keep an eye on what, what attacks are out there, and what CDs popping on our screens, then that's how we keep things secure. We add all the other bits, but yeah. It's probably time for a summary. Yeah, I mean, at that point, we, we probably should have summarised with Gary deciding whether or not he was going to let our, um, He's our do WordPress project to go live. Um, we're going to start now, we're, we're going to end with some introductions. We, we tried something extra, <coughs> we had no idea if that, what, that was going to work. Um, we did spend the full day coming up doing a traditional slide deck where this got pretty much to the evening and then decided to throw it away. Figured we needed a, a third party in all this and we, we tried that. Um, the summary from me, from my red side, and... Well, well who are you? Oh, oh yeah, actually, we're going to do some introductions. We're going to do the introductions at the end. Who am I? Um, today I've been playing Glenn the Pentester. In real life, that's not me at all, whilst I've got an interest in the more offensive side of stuff. Actually, I sit in meetings like this most of the time playing Tim Droll. I work at Skybet, part of the Brunnerbet management team. And Wait, part hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've ever sat in a meeting with them where a marketing person has actually come to you? and said, I'm going to do this, what is the security implications? You've been in that meeting. Yeah. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do, think we do things right, but no, but um, yeah, real, realistically, that is kind of my side of things, is we do do a lot of risk assessments, we do a lot of helping teams through this sort of thing. Um, me and Tim worked together many, many years ago in WordPress, and we figured that It'd be kind of good to go on stage and do two team, uh, a, a tag team thing like we used to do. Tim, however, has now moved on from those days of trying to write stuff I was trying to sell and is, I am the WordPress platform lead for 34SP.com, which is a managed WordPress host. That means that I get to play and secure thousands upon thousands of WordPress websites. I have the, it's PG, isn't it? I have the greatest <laughs> job in security ever! Because I get to do this day in, day out. But genuinely, I actually do enjoy my job. And it's because I do get to see the worst of the internet. Literally, the worst of the internet. Um, but I also get to see how much stuff can be defended against with really both simple and basic stuff. Uh, nothing in this talk is revolutionary. And that's the frustrating thing. When you come to a hacker conference, you want to show off. You slide behind Tim. Did you like me to? There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to do uh, that. Okay. Uh, you want to show off. You want to show the most amazing things. But the vast majority of the time, I don't do amazing things. And I do boring, everyday stuff that doesn't make great talks. But then we realize that there are people in this room who probably still believe that WordPress is this horror story of a thing that's from the, like, the 1950s before the web existed. Uh, but in some people's heads, they will be there in that scenario, and that this is, all, this is literally being written in someone's bedroom, and that, you know, it's all hell, and it's got such a really bad reputation that I basically just wanted to come on stage and go, it's a CMS. You treat it like a CMS. It's a database with some stuff connecting to a database. And if you don't know how to secure a database and a web application, what are you doing here? If that's your job, just do it. People in security, our job is not to necessarily say no. Our job is to say, let's talk about this and do it safely. 
let's start, let's try and move that conversation forward. Um, and so I'm hoping that we at least inspire you to have another look. Don't look too deeply. <laughs> we don't want you to break everything. But think about this again. 33% of the web is, we said 30 there, but it's 33% of the web uses WordPress. And there are thousands of hacks every single day. But if we start normalizing that, and we look at just WordPress core, we start building in our own custom plugins and themes, it's actually not too bad of a place to work. It's not too scary. And um, coming back to where this talk started, cause this talk started at Leeds PHP, so I mean, Tim met for the first time in years and started talking about WordPress security. We were particularly talking about WordPress in the enterprise. If you're looking with, at WordPress as a whole, Yes, there are still absolute horror shows out there. There are still people running Red Slide. There are still people with unupdated, trashy plugins. However, we're specifically talking about enterprise. Can you make WordPress enterprise ready? Can you make it secure for proper commercial assets in a, in a way? Absolutely, yes, you can. And it pains me to say it because I do enjoy winding Tim up about this. Should you just say that I, again? Yeah, yeah. Nearly forgot. PG audience can't say those words. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I do like when, I, I can't say those words, but I will point out that Tim is often described as a, a, a WordPress security expert, and I do like to point out WordPress security is an oxymoron. Um, but no, if you're looking at a specific um, instance of WordPress that is, you are setting up yourself for your organization, it can be done properly. If you're a great sort black hat that just wants to own all the things, of course there are yeah, you, you, you will still be tripping over the low-hanging fruit, but you, it can be done. Well, let, let's so, be clear, there's literally frameworks designed purely to attack WordPress. Yeah. Um, but just to put it back over here, that we are also, if you ever think, oh, yes, well, WordPress is special, just go look up at any other CMS and add the word Geddon to the end of it. <laughs> it's not unique in occasionally having the odd security problem. Just say. So, if you want some actual summaries to this, mine as a pretend red teamer today would, ooh, yeah, <laughs> see, we still have slides. <laughs> uh, sorry, we don't have slides, these aren't slides, these, this isn't an orthodox at all. Um, from a red, red point of view, my advice is stop thinking of it as WordPress, just think of it as a web app. All the same things, you would, if, if, if as a, a sort of a pen tester or a bank hunter, you're attacking just a generic web app, go at it like that, don't consider it as WordPress. If it's been set up by grown-ups for using a commercial enterprise, just running WP scan and enumerating the out-of-date plugins isn't going to get you very far. But looking at those integration points, looking at those weak edges, looking at that whole dependency tree of stuff that's been loaded that nobody will have audited, that's where you're going to find the chinks. And, well, <laughs> stop thinking of it as WordPress. It's just another website app. When we start thinking of it as WordPress, that thing is where we get problems. When we decide that WordPress is not suitable, so we're going to push it outside, is when we get problems. Because the marketing team isn't going to not use WordPress. They are still going to do it. Just, they'll go use a third party host, they'll go take it outside of your network. And that's when they will start doing silly things like using their email creds to set up SMT, WPSMTP to send out emails and have that in plain text and stuff like that. For those of you that don't realise what Tim's already knew that, that was essentially the Panama's paper the hack. Potentially. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Potentially. Um, so, um, actual summaries. It's really shocking. It's enterprise stuff. It's all threat modelling. It's all risk-cost analysis. It's nothing special. The question isn't really WordPress. It's just another web app. Sorry. This was not what you came to see. You all wanted to see something fun. But, I mean, we'll, we'll come up with some random examples for you in the questions if you want, uh, which leads us on to, uh, we did say, come fight us. We didn't mean it, obviously. <laughs> but, Tim, over the course of writing this presentation, which probably shouldn't have been as, as, wasn't as long as it should have been, has convinced me that actually, it probably is enterprise ready, but say we, we brought you in here, we challenged you, we said fight us, so any questions, either to say, guys, you're still wrong, or just in general. Please know if it's going to be a 10-page essay on how WordPress is insecure, 
that's great. Come and find us later. Just and if quick want, questions, please. If you want to talk about Tim's convoluted Jenkins example, grab him afterwards. There's a reason we went quite light and low detail on that. And I should point out it's nothing to do with my employer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So thank you. We've been going. We've been Any questions? Um, Look, it's it's someone big right at the like back. I just saw an arm go up somewhere in the wave, back. Wave, wave, more waving. That person. He looks nice. Hang on, I can't see him. Oh, I've changed my mind. He doesn't look nice. Go to somebody else. No. No, no. He's there. Uh, for Tim, just wondering if you had any experience with Pipdig? <laughs> oh, we had, so seriously, yeah. we had a whole, um, section on Pipdig, and Glenn went, nobody's gonna understand you. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Pipdig is a theme company. I, I don't want to call them company. Pipdig is a bunch of people who wrote some themes. And they wrote some themes for, uh, WordPress, and they wrote, I didn't even know you could get themes for Blogspot, but for Blogger and Blogspot. And, turns out there were a bunch of, oh crap. Uh, oh well, we just said crap, so we'll guess PG's out the window. There are a bunch of assholes. Absolutely. Not. When we talk about uh, uh, poisoning the well and supply vendor attacks, we assume the vendor is not the malicious bad guy. In Piptic's case, they actually start loaded in JavaScript into their themes, which they then distributed to their customers that attacked other sites deliberately so they would slow down so their marketing team could contact them and say, your website's running slow, why don't you use our theme and move to our hosting? That is a mere example of what they could do. They put in kill switches into their themes that would wipe the entire database. And their response was, we did it for our customers. And the scary thing is, that their customers tend to be, uh, they aim very much at the blogger market. So non-professional people, their themes are relatively cheap. And they, in a weird way, they provided excellent support to their customers. You know, apart from the bit where they were abusing, using their customers to DDoS people. So their customers went, oh no, they're really nice. We don't believe you. But, 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 no, 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 they're really nice and they say they didn't do it. Ah, it took an enormous amount of effort to convince these people that the thing that they had on their site was bad. And you know what? They're just restarting. They'll do it somewhere else. Um, the problem with that is that, yeah, other than certainly screwing their customers in the ecosystem, how do you defend against something like that? In any industry. When your vendor goes rogue, I mean, there's a level of which we have to at some point trust somebody. Um, and yeah, when we can't trust the person we're paying because they happen to decide that they are just complete and utter madmen, I, 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 yeah, I despair because <coughs> it has poisoned and caused problems and I don't have an answer and I don't think the industry has an answer and it goes beyond WordPress by a massive way. This is anything where you, somebody sells a service is onto another, we just assume that they are at least va incompetent, yes. But at least they're nice. They're meant to be the good guys. And they weren't. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't got a really good answer other than fuck them. I, I, I am really glad you asked that question, though, because when we were doing this, we did have an entire section on that and, you know, that was around that sort of threat modeling and supply chain and the side of things. And we genuinely thought we can't actually advise on how you, you know, on a uh, essentially a third, trusted third party going rogue on you. That's hopefully such a one-off situation. Because it was a great story, it just didn't fit with our yeah. narrative, so it got lost. In I would say, go everybody in the room, if you're interested, go Google Pipdig, uh, Wordfence and Jem, who's actually a UK-based uh, hacker, it did a really good job of writing up. There were two separate write-ups. I really recommend you go look at both of them. Uh, and yeah, follow the story, because it's mental. Any other questions? from nice people. Wow, cool. Right, I'm going now. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you very, very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>